we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pit Panthers Football Network as we welcome you back for our Season 6 end-of-season team review episode. We're going to go through the season, how things went week to week, and then we're going to talk about really wrapping everything up. We'll take a look at the stats. We'll take a look at the team stats for how we ranked around the NCAA this year and then where we are moving forward. So as always, guys, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so let's take a look at our schedule for the season. Of course, a disappointing start to the year. We took on Tennessee in a ranked matchup. Ended up being a fantastic game. Uh, We lost 41-31. to We gave it a battle. And this was the game that signaled the start of our change at quarterback, of course. We got behind the eight ball very, very early. Tennessee was up 27-7 to on us uh, late in the second quarter. Ended up with a touchdown. And then a pick six about the next play, which gave them that gigantic lead. We did get a late touchdown. Davion Reynolds linking up with C.J. Kirk. That's a touchdown uh, that we heard many, many times this season. Reynolds had two touchdowns there in the first half. And then in the second half is where we finally saw J. Keys come back to life. Two touchdowns for him, one on a run, one on a reception. But we also threw another pick six. That ended up being the deciding factor, and we really didn't know who we had at quarterback at that point. Uh, 285 yards passing, but you remember if we look back at the player stats, two interceptions for C.J. Kirk, three interceptions for A.C. Reese. They combined for 280 yards, but it was a brutal day at the office for the two of them. Reynolds did get on the score sheet. Kirk showed off what he could do with his legs, uh, and Jay Keyes led the way with six catches for us. Next game, we took on Temple at home, came back thinking this is a game, get the team right, get everything straightened out, and boy was it a lot closer than we anticipated. Temple gave us all we could handle. We ended up winning on a game-winning field goal from Johnny Medea as time expired. Temple tied the game, 10 straight points in the fourth quarter, the game-tying field goal with just over a half a minute to play, and then we ended up with the late field goal to win it. Davion Reynolds with another big game, had a punt return for a touchdown in this one, ran for a touchdown as well, really solid performance from him. The offense again sputtered. AC restarted the game. He struggled. He got pulled. CJ Kirk came in. He ended up throwing three interceptions, but he did show a little bit for us uh, with the touchdown. He just seemed to be able to make more plays. He did a lot of work with his feet, 58 yards rushing in this game. London had a nice game as well, and that was where we really saw him come to life. Jay Keys led the way again with six catches. Next game we took on Maryland, 55-13 win, and this is where Jake or CJ Kirk claimed hold of the quarterback position claimed hold of the offense we had a pick six in this game we did give up a kickoff for a touchdown uh to brown and that made it look even closer than it was otherwise maryland wouldn't even had a touchdown on us which was impressive because the some of the pieces they had on offense were very good we outgained them almost two to one and it was the first game that we we had four interceptions as well forgot about that against muhammad great game for us there and cj kirk Three touchdowns. He had two interceptions. I think his last play of the game was also an interception before we took him out and put in the, the subs. But 270 passing. The interceptions weren't that bad. A lot of them were, were, were late plays that didn't really matter. Reynolds had a nice game. Kirk ran for another touchdown. London had a nice I mean, the offense in, in general was fantastic. And then, of course, like we mentioned, defensively, four INTs, two from Damian Vector. Huge game there. Next thing, we kept the winning ways going with a win over Syracuse, 38-27, a team that ended up being really good this year, 10-3, and and they only kept things close because they had two defensive touchdowns on us. Dukes had a 65-yard fumble recovery, and Humphrey had a 30-yard pick six that kept things close until we pushed it out of reach. Jay Keys with a touchdown. Kirk threw for a couple more. Reynolds with two touchdowns laid on as Fenton scored to try and give Syracuse a win. They went up 27-24 in the fourth quarter, but then Davion Reynolds took the game under his wing and led us to victory. Kirk threw for 352 yards in this game, another game where he just put up yards. Uh, It was one of those things where it was kind of surprising uh, how well he was able to do it. Keys with six catches, Paul Lease with a nice day. Uh, But Kirk, 352 yards passing, Reynolds with a couple of touchdowns was the big aspect of this game. And then interesting juxtaposition after an offensive slugfest in the last couple of weeks. Defense shut everything down against NC State, a 17-6 win. We had one touchdown in the entire game. It was a bomb from uh, C.J. Kirk to Jay Keys, 59 yards. Otherwise, it was field goals. Uh, NC State did have a touchdown is what this shows, but I remember I think that got called back, which is why it shows here. Uh, we had another touchdown, in, two touchdowns, I guess, on the day. The scoring summary is a little screwed up here because I remember they had their touchdown called back, and then I guess we scored another touchdown, which is what kind of wrinkles it up there. Um, 
a rushing touchdown in this one. McDonald struggled. They were missing their starting quarterback, Holloway, and that's what hurt them. We had two picks in the game. C.J. Kirk threw for a touchdown, but two picks again. The turnovers were what killed him this year and what killed us in our bowl game and most of the games that we lost this season. Reynolds had a rushing touchdown, so there you go. Uh, Kirk didn't do much rushing the football in this one, and J. Keys four for 128, one of his smallest outputs of the season. K.J. Welsh had 87 yards, uh, but Keys did put up over 100 yards and a TD. Then we had, of course, the comeback of the season against UCLA. 21 points in the fourth quarter, including the game-winning touchdown to Keith on Yango, of all people, with 19 seconds to play in the fourth quarter from C.J. Kirk. Kirk threw three touchdown passes in the fourth. He had a touchdown run in the third. A great game from him, but he did turn the ball over again. We had three INTs on the day, but 376 yards passing, 570 yards of offense. UCLA put up 500 yards of offense, and that's the thing we noticed with our team is when we played the really good teams, we gave up a lot of yards, that's for certain. So our defense was very hit or miss this season. We had some really great games. We also had some games where we really struggled. 376 passing, three touchdowns for C.J. Kirk, but of course the three interceptions that hurts that review. 67 yards rushing and a touchdown, which is great to see. Reynolds, 83 yards rushing on the game. London, okay contributions. Keys had a touchdown, but only a yard rushing. Paul Lease led the way, and I remember this was the game that Lease and Greer had huge catches in the fourth quarter and on the final drives to set us up for that game-winning touchdown. It was their biggest games of the season by far, and Greer had some struggles with drops this year. It was great to see him have a couple of big games and bounce back. Lee, seven catches for 111 yards, his best game of the year for sure. Jay Keyes still had a touchdown, five catches on Yango, of course, had the winning touchdown as well, which was great to see. Davion Reynolds actually held off the score sheet catch-wise in this one. Moved on to the matchup with Virginia Tech the next week, and our five-game winning streak came to an end. It was another game where we put ourselves behind the eight ball early on, went into a big, big hole, down 23-7 at halftime. We were down 40 to what 15 going into the fourth quarter or uh excuse me 40 to, to yeah 14 going into the fourth quarter 40 to 14 going into the fourth quarter we scored 18 points in the fourth but it just wasn't enough we couldn't get that final onside kick and stop virginia tech pick six hurt us again kylan howard 86 yards to the house in the second quarter for the hokies ac reese ended up coming in for cj kirk because of how much he was struggling in that game reese then got injured and was he was hit and miss throughout the game he did have a touchdown run but he was hit and miss throughout the game he came back out due to injury and the fact that he was doing okay kirk came back in and was electric in the second half. Touchdown pass to Jay Keyes, 53-yard touchdown pass to Ogden, who had two catch touchdown catches of more than 50 yards this season. But Jakari Thomas's big touchdown put things out of reach for Virginia Tech. We were trying to come back. We did as much as we could, but Thomas's touchdown was really a knife in the back for us. And despite what we did in the fourth quarter, we just couldn't make the effort to come from behind. Travis Huff, great game for him. That's why he was in the Heisman running all season, ran for 100 on us as the quarterback. Kirk, remember, comes in. Two touchdowns, one interception, 211 passing. Doesn't look like that bad of a stat line, especially when you put it next to A.C. Reese's, but I have to thank A.C. Reese. Tip my hat to him in this game. He at least provided us a spark despite the loss. Kirk with 11 uh, rushes for 49 yards and a touchdown. Keys, great game for him. Again, he has big games and losses. I feel like it's weird. Nine catches for 97 yards and a touchdown. Ogden had a touchdown as well despite the losing effort. We bounced back the next week against another Virginia team, UVA, 37-6. This was probably one of our best defensive games of the season alongside the Maryland game. They passed for a lot of yards, again, because of garbage time, and they were just airing it out late on. But they couldn't get into the end zone. Four red zone trips, no touchdowns, and they had negative 13 rushing yards. I think it's the best output we've ever had against a rushing attack in this one. It, Negative yardage is something you hardly ever see. It helped. They couldn't get anything going. And then we had sacks that were able to push them into negative yards. Kirk, just a great game. He really managed it well. Two touchdowns, 200 yards passing. Sibley, this was his fantastic game. He had a big touchdown run. Reynolds had a big run as well. Both over 100 yards, which was great to see. Uh, this was Sibley's really marquee performance of the year. Keys, this is more what you see in a, in a win. Five or six catches, 60 to 80 to 90 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, but we spread the ball around really well, and it was just a great Great team performance in this one. Uh, defensively, of course, Ronnie Baker had two sacks. Jalen Hills had two sacks. We were all over the field uh, defensively to beat Virginia. We then had a week off before going to Georgia Tech for a Thursday game where we beat them in prime time, 37-17. C.J. Kirk, another solid performance, but you can see 
the defense stepped up in this one. Uh, Granger, I remember he had a – this return fumble was overturned, uh, but we did end up still scoring a touchdown in the third quarter. We ended up running for three touchdowns, throwing for two, and we didn't turn the ball over for the second straight game, which was fantastic to see uh, against the Georgia Tech defense here. Uh, C.J. Kirk, 227, two touchdowns. That's probably the stat line you'd like to see from him because it means we're running the ball well uh, in addition. Reynolds had almost 80 yards. Sibley, another solid performance in a touchdown. Kirk had a touchdown run as well. Jay Keys, finally a big performance in a win. 10 catches, 108 yards, two touchdowns in this one. What a game uh, for Mr. Clutch, the Blitnikoff winner from last year, Jay Keys. We then beat Duke 44-24, and this was a game where we were just all over them offensively. C.J. Kirk, he was, he, he was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He was incredible in this game. You can see five touchdown passes in this one, but... He had a couple of interceptions again. You know, two interceptions, but five touchdowns, 360 yards passing, 570 yards of offense. Look at this stat line. 361 passing, five TDs, two INTs. So can you be that mad about the INTs in this game? Really? I guess not. C.J. London bounced back in this one. Reynolds had a nice game. K.J. Welch with his biggest game of the year, seven catches, 75 yards, two TDs, which was great to see. Reynolds also had two TDs. I think he scored on two different screen passes, one of which went for 64 yards. Big game for him. Um... So I don't know what to say about Kirk. It's so so hit or miss. And then this was a game where, again, the offense came back to bite us. UNC, we expected them to air it out. Anderson, their quarterback, was, I think, fifth in the country in passing yards this year. Instead, they grinded it out and won 20-13 to 13 on us, running for 121 yards. It was one of, our, one of our best pass defense games of the season, only 150 yards. But, again, three turnovers, two INTs, and we didn't even throw a touchdown pass in this one. Just a really tough day. O'Donnell wore us down with 94 yards, and for us, offensively, not going to get it done. No touchdowns, two INTs. We couldn't run the ball at all, which killed us. Our leading rusher had 29 yards, and again, it was another game that keys three catches, least four catches, rounds. We just couldn't get anything going at all. That knocked us out of ACC championship contention, the slim hope we potentially had. We did get a win against Miami, 31-28 to 28 with a late field goal, and then our defense made a huge stand to end up getting us the victory there. Another game that was kind of interesting. We didn't turn the ball over, which was great. We ran the ball well. We gave up a ton of yards through the air. We'll need to address that going into next year. But Kirk managed the game much better here. 200 yards and a touchdown. He ran for 91 yards, which was fantastic to see. I love seeing him to get to use his legs. We know how quick he is. Reynolds had a nice game. Keys had five catches and a touchdown. Just a decent game overall. And then, of course, we go into the bowl against Georgia. And this is probably the most disappointing one because we had the lead. And then we give up a big play to Georgia, Quinton Williams, to tie the game. And then we had the ball. We were driving. I think we went down. I was almost worried we were going down the field too fast because we drove down the field with, I think, four or five plays, all runs. And we went from, you know, the 25 or wherever down to their 10 in about four or five plays. And then we called one pass play finally just to mix it up on Georgia. We go five wide, and the pressure, they bring a corner blitz from the wide side of the field of all places. And, of course, C.J. Kirk turns right into it, fumbles the ball. We also had a late interception in that game, which was a killer. And the big plays were incredible in this game. 68-yard run for Stewart, 77-yard pass to Keyes, 50-yard pass to Ogden, 44-yard run by Jackson Trout, 46-yard pass to Kirk, 53-yard pass to Ford. The only touchdown from inside the red zone came uh, late in the game with Stewart. It was just a ridiculous, or we had one as well, but it was a ridiculous, ridiculous game. C.J. Kirk, 381, three touchdowns, but his two turnovers are what killed us yet again. So that's the big thing to hopefully see from him going into next year is improvement in protecting the ball. Jay Keyes, what a swan song he had. Eight catches, 173 yards and a touchdown. Ogden with a great last game. Reynolds with a great last game. Defensively, Avery Heller with a sack. Uh, Carlson with a sack. Hampshire with a sack. So at least we saw some good games from some of our key contributors. And we finished 9-4. and four. It's disappointing. We haven't had a season with this with under 10 wins since season 2 of the Dynasty when we went 8-5. and five. That was the year uh, Kenny Pickett was a freshman, came in in the bowl game as we lost to Texas A&M, and he nearly led us to a come-from-behind win. That was a tough year, uh, but we've been very good otherwise, so having a down year, it's something that y you have happen sometimes. We had a freshman quarterback, keep in mind. He made some mistakes, led the NCAA in interceptions with 19, but it was still a very good season. And speaking of that freshman quarterback, let's take a look at our team stats for the year. Uh, C.J. Kirk led the way, 27 touchdowns, 19 INTs, sacked 29 times, passed for 250 yards a game, which is really good. He's 
3,300 yards as a freshman. That's a freshman rookie record for the Panthers. I think that's maybe third all time in Pitt history if we include this dynasty because I think Kenny had one year that was better. I know Rod Rutherford had a year where he was about 3,600 yards. Uh, so I think this might be third all time in Pitt passing yards in a season. This guy's a true freshman. So expect big things out of him moving forward next year. 27 TD passes in a year. He does two or three more, two more seasons like that or even improves on that. He'll have all time record numbers in Pitt quarterback history. If he stays for all four years, he could have the total yardage record as well. AC Reese, disappointing year for him. I expect him, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with his future. But a guy with such high hopes, he just kind of cracked under the pressure a little bit. We'll see how he does goes moving forward and what happens with him. But a player with a lot of talent, that's for sure. Rushing the football, Davion Reynolds didn't get that 1,000-yard rusher this year. If we had one in the last couple of years, uh, London was the closest last year, 938, and Sibley was the closest the year before with 721. So we haven't had a 1,000-yard rusher since, I believe, the 2018 or twenty uh, yeah 2018 season in Dynasty with Quadri Olison, uh, unfortunately. We've gone three seasons now without a 1,000-yard rusher. I think Davion Reynolds has that in his future. You can see he only averaged like 12 carries a game. Uh, in our 13 games, just because of the fact that we had three really good running backs, so we spaced them out. C.J. Kirk, also good running the ball, led us with nine touchdowns, but we will be losing London next year. We'll be losing Sibley next year. We will still have the likes of, K uh, of Colin Wells still on the team. He didn't get much action because we had so many good running backs, but we have Daenerys Carter coming back. So we'll see if those guys can provide at least a nice supplemental running game behind Reynolds who expects to get a lot more carries I think next year and we'll probably see a little bit more out of the running game with Kirk as well so we don't have to force him to air it out so much and have so many turnovers despite the fact he's shown he can do it receiving wise Jakey's a down year for him after last year you could say but reminiscent of his freshman year 77 catches a thousand yards 11 touchdowns so still very impressive there his longest catch of his career came in the bowl game 77 yards and what was great to see from him way less drops again he got more to himself in that regard Our passing him wasn't as prolific as far as getting keys the ball but I think he still did a really nice job 11 touchdowns led the way Paul Lease I thought he had a down year but he ended up not being too much worse it was closer to his sophomore year 40 catches and same same thing for keys I think we saw a little bit of a regression in the passing game uh, from last season of course no Kenny anymore that's bound to happen and so we dropped back to like Kenny's junior year passing game uh, and we saw Lee still a good player 13 yards a catch 40 catches on the season 159 catches for his career nothing to shake a stick at there we also saw a lot more from the running back position as far as receiving is concerned I think our leading receiver from running back last year maybe had 19 20 catches it was London this year was Reynolds with 32 catches over 500 yards so that probably contributed as well to a little bit of changing of the guard as far as receptions KJ Welsh again as a true freshman 46 catches fell back to just 32 this year but more than likely, if Jay Keyes goes to the NFL draft, he's wide receiver number one next year. And so we're going to expect big things. He's a big target. He's got a lot of talent. And I think he'll be great uh, in the outside role next year. Ogden, 27 catches on the year. A little bit down from last year in terms of receptions. But in terms of yards, he actually went up. Four touchdowns on the year. So definitely his most prolific year. And his yards per reception was big. Uh, so I think with his rating, he's a guy that could go and try and make a roster in the NFL. He has great speed. Uh, I think he's 95 speed, something like that. So he's a good player just didn't do too much Caleb Cannon ended up being our leading tight end receiver he's just gradually progressed year over year he was a guy that I didn't think he'd amount to much and he ended up being a really good contributor like we said mini Gronk is what we always called him and he was just a very reliable target big body could make a good catch when you need him to unfortunately unlike what Antonio Greer was this year he saw a big regression this year down to only 18 catches no touchdowns and the big number was drops, up to six drops on the season. He really struggled this year. It was disappointing. It saw him benched for a couple of games uh, in favor of Cannon. So that was a shame, but still a good season for him. Onyango's a guy to watch for next year. He's kind of the, the Benjamin Ogden replacement, and then he's a quick receiver, uh, and he's a good player, good size. I think he'll be on the outside more than likely uh, next season as well. Mitchell will be coming back. So we got some guys coming back, but more than likely we'll be losing three of our top five pass catchers from this year in Ogden, Lease to graduation or the NFL, and Jay Keys potentially to the NFL draft. Blocking-wise, Ryan Henry, 
great season for him. 20 pancakes against just four sacks allowed. Luke Davis played at left guard, 18 pancakes against four sacks allowed. He'll be back next year, which is great to see. Henry with a great senior season. Michael Collins, very improved, which I like to see. You can see over the years, he's gotten better at that right tackle position. He always gets kind of put under the eight ball because that's the direction we scramble with a right-handed quarterback, but good season for him. Our tight ends had plenty of pancakes. Antonio Ryan starting for the first time, the former Juco, seven pancakes, two sacks given up. John Cooper, our center, bit of a regression from him, six pancakes, two sacks given up. Last year he had 15 pancakes, only one sack given up. He's just a great, great player, though, and one that we'll definitely see at the next level. Sykes came in in deputy duty uh, at left guard. He, true freshman. I thought he quit himself very well, as did Daniel Jenkins, as did Trey Brown, guys that could potentially play roles next year in the starting positions. Wendell Matthews, Charles Rhodes, all those guys are more than likely going to have starting roles next year. Defensively, Avery Heller led the way in tackles. A regression from last season. He ends up with 97 tackles this year. He had 115 Last year, albeit in one more or two more games, I guess. But still, uh, I thought he was just a little bit worse this year. He didn't make as many plays. Same number of sacks, but no picks. Didn't force any fumbles. So he's still a fantastic player. I hope he comes back for next year. It's uh, it's in flux with him as a true junior. If he can wants to come back or wants to test the waters of the NFL, we'll see. We had a similar situation with Paris Ford, who left after his junior year as well. Lachlan, 89 tackles, good season for him. Calvin Carlson, 75 tackles at the middle linebacker position. Finally got an opportunity to start. He was a JUCO transfer a few year, three years back as well, so great to see him step in. Probably have the most tackles that we've seen from one of our middle linebackers in the last couple of years. Uh, Hampshire, unbelievable year from him. Sparing play uh, as a safety and as like a, a dime corner for us. He was a thir- always our third safety and like a dime corner. He gets moved to outside linebacker this year, and he was a beast. Six sacks, three interceptions, had a, pi- a touchdown as well on a pick six, uh, two deflections, forced a fumble. Look at that stat line. Such impact from Hampshire. I think even despite his rating, he's a guy we could see at the NFL next year because he's so versatile. He's so fast, but he has the the size, and he can play at a linebacker position, or he could be one of those uh, fox-in-the-box safeties that are so valued nowadays, and I think he's a really good player. Youngling was great from the nickel corner position, really underrated. I thought his pass coverage could probably improve, but he was really good at tackling, had a sack. I thought he was very, very good. couple INTs as well for him. A Darion Mitchell, I thought, came on really really well at the end of the season. Remember, he had that one game, I believe it was against UNC or in the loss, or it might have been against Miami, where he had like 11 tackles, six tackles for a loss. He was unbelievable all over the field. And so I think he's a guy to watch for next year. He came in as a four-star stud recruit, and he just hasn't lived up to it at this point. Plus three gross in every offseason, so he hasn't grown like we've expected him to. I think next year could be the year. He has a big year, four sacks this year. The Vector... I thought underachieved in coverage this year compared to last year. Three interceptions, had four last year. Hopefully we see some good growth out of him. Ronnie Baker is a senior, Mr. Consistent. Six sacks yet again. Never gone over six, but he's never gone under three in his entire career. What a great player he's been. Forced some fumbles as well. Team captain this year. Tough to lose him. Whaley, another guy I want to see more improvement from. Way more tackles, sacks, etc. Because he played in a nickel role last year. He played in the nickel role uh, because we still had Kaiser Artis Scott for one last season. So Whaley played in the nickel, which gives him the opportunity to get around the ball more, which is why he had four sacks. Uh, but this year, six deflections, still three picks. Gave up a few big plays, including one in the bowl game. But I still thought a good season for him. Malachi Bordeaux, I want to see more out of him. He had a big good end to the year with seven sacks, which was very good. But I thought in the first three or four games, he was about invisible. We need more consistency from him. Jay Jalen Hills was the other way around. He had about six sacks after the first four games, and then he was invisible the second half of the year. So we'll see how things shake out there. Granger will be coming back. I thought he was good. Jacobs always has been good. He had a bit of a regression, I thought, this year. Four sacks last year, only one this year. And we see that pretty much across the team. We've seen a bit of a regression from a lot of our big contributors throughout this season. So We'll see how things go moving forward. Tackles for loss. Darion Mitchell led the way with 20. I think he's going to be incredible next year. Outside linebacker, I'm targeting him. From outside linebacker, I could see seven, eight, maybe ten sacks. Our leader in sacks was Hills, then Bordeaux, Baker, Hampshire. So I think Hampshire had six sacks this year. I could see that being Mitchell next year at the very least. Uh, Marcus Lanier is a true freshman, was good. Uh, Lumpkin is a senior, did get a late sack. I thought he was a good player. Bridges came in as a sophomore Juco product, had a good season, I thought. Um, he's going to start next year, so we'll see how he does. INT leaders, Hampshire had three 
from his out. He, like I said, he was everywhere. Uh, outside linebacker, you put him in coverage, he could come in and make sacks. I mean, he was definitely our team MVP on the defensive side of the football. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, probably honorable mention to the likes of Avery Heller just because he makes so many big tackles. But Hampshire was incredible this season. Vector had three picks, Whaley had three picks, Youngling had two, and Carlson from middle linebacker a couple picks as well was very, very solid. Uh, deflections leader. Passes defended was Whaley, which is this is where I said Vector struggled this year. Only two passes defended. He did have three picks, but only two passes defended. He needs to be more like Whaley, knocking that football away and not giving uh, the man he's covering an opportunity to make a play on the football. So hopefully we'll see some continued improvement from him next season. Force fumbles. Baker led the way. Lachlan had a couple as well. The problem was we didn't really recover many. Reynolds, that one doesn't count. That was on a, a field goal, missed field goal. But Bordeaux had one. Hills had one. Granger had one. So we recovered three, and I think we forced eight. Not good enough. Need to be better around the football, getting to that football to create plays and keep the turnover differential better, or better especially when we were turning the football over so much this season. Of course, Hampshire had our only defensive touchdown. We did have another one uh, for Granger on a fumble recovery, but it got overturned. Uh, Hampshire did have a pick six, though, this season. Kicking stats-wise, we're going to go to Johnny Midday. Very, very good, very consistent. He missed, of course, one in the bowl game. Missed only one more throughout the season. I think he missed two extra points on the year as well because I started simulating all the extra points. I thought it made it more fair because if you just manually kick them, you're never going to miss them. So I started simulating all extra points. And so that's where he started missing a couple. Of course, I do the same thing with the field goals as well, unless it's like a game-winning field goal or something of that nature. We're simulating those as well. And so he had a good season. We'll see if that continues into next year. Eric Fox, very good year punting, 14 inside the 28 touchbacks. Just a consistent, consistent player. Return, of course, was Reynolds. Very very good returner, good yards per, uh, yards per return. But he did, never broke that big one. I was expecting him to get a touchdown. I know he's quick. He's a very good player, but never broke that long one. We'll see. We have a couple speedsters coming in in the recruiting class. We'll see if he retains that job. Uh, did have a punt return for a touchdown, though, so we may keep him in the punt return game. Uh, but, again, we'll have to see how things shake out going into next year. So that's the team stats for the season. Let's take a look. Uh, at the career stats for the season or the career stats for the team and see how we look there. And so potentially the players were saying goodbye to ignore Jalen Hills, stats. This is because when I transferred a player, he got given uh, the guy I transferred. It was when we had Ben DiNucci on the team. He got given his player ID uh, in the editor. And so that's why it shows him with passing stats. He doesn't actually have any passing stats. Those were DiNucci's stats when he was with us, but AC Reese, if he does leave finishes with two touchdowns, five INTs in his career, of course, C.J. Kirk will be back, 3,300 yards. Jay Keyes, three touchdown passes in his career, only 30 yards passing and five completions. He was recruited as an athlete. We brought him in originally as a quarterback, but he became arguably the best wide receiver in pit history besides Larry Fitzgerald. Rushing stats, C.J. London, career leader in rushing yards, over 2,000 for his career. Disappointing. He was a five-star recruit. Progressed to 94 overall, and he only ends up with 2,000 yards in his career. Never has a 1,000-yard rushing season. And his yards per rush this year was a regression, so I'm not really sure what happened with London. It was kind of a miss there uh, on him. Versus Todd Sibley, three-star recruit, does stay around for an extra season, but he ends up with 1,700 yards. Arguably similar contributions to London, but not necessarily the pedigree. So interesting to see how that played out. Reynolds, of course, four-star, came in as a stud freshman, had a great year. C.J. Kirk good as well. Jay Keyes finishes with 10 rushing touchdowns in his career for 371 yards. Again, I say finishes because we're just operating under the assumption he's going to be a top five pick in the NFL draft or top 10 at the very least. Uh, ignore Hills because, again, that's not his stats. Paul Lease, senior, leaves with 318 yards, four touchdowns in his career, over five yards of carry running the, you know, the jersey jet, the jet sweeps that we would run with him. He was very good. Um, his first year was where he was incredible, had a big 70-yard touchdown when we knocked off number one Notre Dame in South Bend. Uh, from there, he just didn't get as much usage in our offense, especially because, uh, you know, just the way things shook out, guys like K.J. Welsh started getting the ball. K.J. has 175 career uh, rushing yards as well. So we had a couple more options beyond Lee's to get the ball. Plus, we used J. Keys a lot. Uh, J. Keys would run sweeps, or we'd run the Wildcat with J. Keys. So it kind of mixed things up there. You can see where everybody else is. Receiving-wise, Keys finishes with 255 catches in his career, 32 touchdowns, 3,500 yards. We've already talked about him ad nauseum. But Paul Lee's 159 catches in his career, nothing to overlook there. What a player he's been. 14 touchdowns, so consistent year in and year out. Only 10 drops as well. Keys with 25, but of course that's basically one drop per 10 catches. 
least was about the same ratio. The guys that were the real struggle to watch out for. Greer, 13 drops, 82 catches. K.J. Welsh, of course, only his second year, but 13 drops, 78 catches. And I think last year was the big, big year. He had a ton of drops last year, if I remember correctly. Yeah, nine drops last year. So much better this year from him. Hopefully he can keep improving there. Ogden, 13 drops and 75 catches. But good careers for them. Uh, like we said, a little bit of regression uh, over last year's prog- uh ability that they showed, but still very good players, and we're going to miss them dearly. Caleb Cannon as well. Some definite contributions from all of those guys. Blocking-wise, Ryan Henry, 37 career pancakes. Collins, 31. Cooper, 25. Collins gave up 30 sacks, but again, he gets hurt by the fact that he's the right tackle. Luke Davis, the guy to watch going forward next year. 20 pancakes already. Five sacks given up. He's moving to the center, back to his center position uh, with, with Cooper graduating. I think he's going to be really good for us. Defensively, we'll see how the tackle shakes out because I know it's going to get a little messed up here. We'll sort by solo tackles. Uh, Avery Heller. With I believe if you add his assistant solo, he should have 229 or 219 career tackles. What an incredible player he's been! Uh, 29 tackles for a loss, four sacks, two ints. Hopefully he comes back for next year. He's the one I'm most worried about because Keys he's going regardless. Avery Heller though, I mean 90 overall. He could go. It's an, it's definitely one of those ones where when you sim to offseason, it's a 50-50 proposition. Lachlan, very good career for him. couple of years as the starter, 83 tackles each season, or 83 solo tackles each season. Good career for him. Uh, Ronnie Baker, of course, leaves. 20 career sacks for him, 38 tackles for a loss. Uh, Bordeaux is going to be back. Hampshire finishes with seven sacks, four INTs in his career. Very impressive there. Our team INT leader right now is Vector. Whaley's got six. Um... Carlson has two, and Heller has two uh, as well. We can see deflections leader Whaley has nine in two seasons, so he's our leader in the clubhouse there. Heller with four. Vector's only got three in two seasons, which is weird. Uh, He has very good coverage ratings. I don't know why he doesn't go after the ball. Most forced fumbles with Ronnie Baker with four. He did recover one. We can see all the guys that have recovered recovered fumbles as well. And then our only defensive touchdown of guys on the roster this year was Quell Hampshire. Johnny Madej, of course, has only been around for one season, so his field goal numbers are going to be the same as what we saw. Eric Fox finishes with a 42-yard career average, 35 career net average, 61 inside the 20, 24 touchbacks. So really, really solid career for him. Kick return-wise, Reynolds is really our only guy that has seen significant return time uh, after guys graduated last year. Kaiser Artis Scott was a big return. Whaley was our punt returner last year. Didn't do much. You can see the improvement we had with Reynolds there. And now I want to take a look at the records, of course. Take a look at our final wrap-up. Uh, we'll do team stats actually first quickly here just to see how we kind of ranked offensively. Just look at the bar on the right-hand side of the screen to see where we rank. We're like the top maybe uh, 20% in terms of total offense in the country or total yardage in the country. Total offense, uh, where were we at? 5,900 maybe. Yeah, exactly. So, again, same thing, probably top 10% offense in the country passing yardage we're going to be up there pretty high uh, i can see us being in the top 15 or 20 uh rushing we struggled a bit 2200 yards we're probably middle of the pack there i'm not going to scroll and find us but i'd wager middle of the pack points per game again we had a decent offense we just turned the ball over too much which gave the offense uh, other offenses chances with the ball 34 points a game very good right next to penn state there 28 pass tds 24 rush tds Leading pass TDs was 48, least was 6. Most rush TDs was Ole Miss with 43. Holy, they had 86 total touchdowns. That's absurd. We had 24. So you can see, again, we're kind of middle of the pack there for touchdowns. Sacks allowed. Um, I'm not sure. We had like uh, somewhere in the 30s, I think. And then total first downs, again, let's, let's sort it so we can see our team stats. We'll look at the numbers so we know where we would be expecting us. Uh, let's go points per game. We were 34 first downs. We had 279 and we go up 33 sacks. Most first downs with 378, but at least was 203. So again, kind of in the middle, probably better half of the country on offense. Defensively, total yards allowed. We'll have to find ourselves. We probably led the league in, or led the NCAA in most pass yards allowed. Here we go. So 4,800 total yards allowed, 3,400 passing yards, 1,400 rush yards, which is best in the country for sure, just because of the way the game is set up. There's just way more rushing than you'd anticipate. Uh, 332 points allowed, so we're one of the better defensive teams in the country. Not the best, but probably, again, top you know, top 20%, I would say, top 25% defensive-wise. There we go. 41 sacks. 
did not lead the NCAA for, I believe, the first time in four or five seasons in this dynasty, if not more. Uh, we did not lead the NCAA in sacks. We were tied for second with 41. Marshall had 44, which is impressive to see. Only forced th or had three fumble recoveries, very low there. We forced, I think, what was it, eight fumbles, but we only recovered three of them, so that's disappointing there. INTs, we had a decent number. Uh, what did we have INTs? Why, 13? Yeah, so 13 is not bad. Again, probably top third of the country defensively there conversion wise we were very high in third down conversions 52 percent conversion rate we were 75 percent on fourth down which is very very good um two point conversions we were 100 percent perfect their best team at converting third downs in the country was Ole Miss Oklahoma right there as well no wonder they were playing in the national championship game red zone Attempts, Ole Miss led the way. Red zone touchdown, or Oklahoma led the way, excuse me. Ole Miss had the most red zone touchdowns, though. 68 red zone touchdowns is unbelievable. Um, red zone field goals, Toledo had the most. Best percentage of converging, at least scoring, was Miami. Uh, defensive red zone attempts, we and here we go, we can see our red zone attempts. 32 touchdowns on 52 trips, 12 field goals. We were 84% conversion, but only 52 trips to the red zone, which is, you know, Again, middle of the pack, if not low. Uh, defensive attempts in the red zone. We only let teams into the red zone 43 times, but they scored a lot of the time. We did hold them to a lot of field goals, which is good to see because you compare it to some of these other teams. Like Virginia Tech only let 38 uh, defensive red zone attempts, but 27 touchdowns. We were 43 attempts, but only 19 touchdowns. So our ratio of defensive touchdowns was fantastic. Best in the country at not allowing red zone touchdowns. Duke was terrible. Uh, Clemson had the best percentage of just nobody scoring in the red zone altogether. Uh, very impressive season from them on the conversions. Penalties were always the least. Uh, I try to get some in there. We'll see how we can do next season, but we were the least. Florida, most penalized team in the country. And then turnovers, third worst turnover differential in the country. Hawaii, negative 13. That's why they weren't good. They had a good overall, but they just ended up turning the football over again and again. We had 28 giveaways which is most in the country by far. 23 INTs, most in the country by a few. Ohio State was high as well, interesting. Five fumbles that we lost, middle of the pack there. But we did have a few takeaways to at least counteract that. I think we're probably in the neighborhood of 16. I think we had 13 INTs. Uh, yeah, there we are. So we're, again, top third, maybe top 40% in the country there. 13 INTs was decent. Only three fumble recoveries is what was disappointing for us. But regardless... A great season. And now let's finish it out with a look at the school records. Again, because I'm transferring it over to College Football Revamped, it's going to be hard to bring these over. I'm going to do my best, um, but I'm going to so I'm going to try to see what I'm able to do to bring these over uh, and manually put them in by doing some editing. Otherwise, we'll see them here so we know who had the best performances in our dynasty so far. So passing TDs in a career, Kenny Pickett, 75 touchdowns. That's actually less than the real record. Dan Marino has, I think, 79 uh, is the real record, but in game 75 for Pickett. Passing TDs in a game, we never hit five, so we never tied that record. Or no, we did hit five. I know Kirk's hit five. You must have to beat it for it to actually show up. So Kirk's tied that with five. I know that. Uh, TDs in a season, Kenny Pickett had 32. Record for us, which is fantastic. Yards in a career, Pickett went over 10,000. Uh, the record for real in Pitt is Alex Van Pelt. He's over 11,000, but they just didn't have that in the game for whatever reason. Passing yards in a game, uh, 481. That's Tony Gonzalez, probably. Oh, that says 2008 QB. I'm not sure. Uh, Bill Stull probably was our QB, was our QB then. Um, but he, so 480 there. We've never eclipsed that. I know Kirk got into the 400s this year, if I remember correctly, uh, one time. But he has not hit that record number just yet. Kenny Pickett does have the record for passing yards in a season. I knew that as he passed Rod Rutherford last year uh, in season five, the 2020 season, 3,990 yards, so close to 4,000. Uh, but he does have the record in passing. Receiving-wise, Jay Keys, 32 touchdowns in his career. Never got three in a game. Um, and if he did, he would have tied the record. Uh, but we never beat it, so we're still, if we do have a three, I have to go back and look at the records there. Most catches in a season, Jay Keys, which was fantastic. Or TDs in a season, 16. Again, that's not the real pit record. I think Larry Fitzgerald had 22 uh, in his season when he should have won the Heisman in 2003. But Keys was 16, our best in our dynasty for sure. Receiving yards in a career, Jay Keys has the pit record, 3,509 yards. Yards in a game, 245 yards here. We never eclipsed that. I don't even think Keys ever had a 200-yard game. He definitely had, like we saw, games where he was at like 170 yards, 175 yards. But I don't believe he ever hit 200. 
Uh, receiving yards in a season. Keys is Bolitnikoff winning year. He had 1428. Uh, he had 102 receptions that year as well. Pit record. 255 receptions in his career pit record. Receptions in a game, 14 is the record there. It says 2006 receiver, so that'd be like Greg Lee, maybe. Um, but we never eclipsed that number. Uh, Keys, I think, best was maybe 11 or 12 in that Penn State loss from a couple of seasons ago uh, when he burst onto the scene. He did have 10, of course, in a game against Georgia Tech this year. Defensively, was there no rushing stats? Uh, they're, they'll come around. Defensively, interceptions in a career. The real pit record's 21. Uh, I don't remember what ours is. I believe it's probably Kaiser Artis Scott was in double digits, but I don't remember how many he finished with. Uh, interceptions in a game. We've never had three. We've had two. We saw Vector had two earlier in a game this season. INTs in a season. Record shown here is nine. Uh, we've never touched that. I believe Artis Scott maybe had six or seven one season. was probably his best. Sacks in a career. Uh, and then even our first year, maybe Avante Maddox or somebody had a decent number, but I don't have that off the top of my head. Sacks in a career, Sean Wolfgang, of course, NCAA record. It ties the Pitt all-time record, the, the unofficial record that Pitt has uh, from before the NCAA kept sacks officially with Hugh Green. Both of them had 49 sacks, but Wolfgang, of course, 49 sacks in his career over the course of four seasons. Unbelievable year for him uh, and just a fantastic performance. Great player and great to see him with that career rating, uh, career record. Record. Sacks in a game, Dwayne Hendricks had four in our first season, or second season of this dynasty, season two. He ended up with a four-sack performance, which we duplicated in later games. I remember, uh, I don't remember if Wolfgang, had, I think he had, he's definitely had three. He might have had four in one game. I remember Keyshawn Camp, our defensive tackle. We had a game against Georgia Tech where we had 11 sacks, and Keyshawn Camp had four. I think Wolfgang might have also had four. So they, they've tied that record, uh, but did not beat it. So four is our, our tied best performance. And the most sacks in a season, though, Wolfgang does not hold this. Darren Toth, 18 sacks last season in our dynasty because remember it shows why it says 2017 is it shows 2018 in our file even though we're actually in the 2021 season uh darren toth with 18 sacks in season five in our dynasty unbelievable year uh and put in a great performance 18 sacks wolfgang had 16 that season uh but he never hit 18 which is the record there for toth and then rushing we've never touched any of these numbers of course uh james connor would be closest for rushing yards and even these numbers aren't accurate because rushing yards in a game tony dorsett rushing yards in a season Tony Dorsett. Rushing yards in a career, Tony Dorsett. Rushing TD in a season, James Conner um, had the record uh, in that. Rushing TDs in a game, I don't know off the top of my head. If it was 2004, that's probably, you know, Brandon Myrie or someone of that nature. Um, and then rushing TD in a career, again, same thing. James Conner has that record. Uh, I just don't have the exact number off the top of my head, so we'll make sure that we know those going into the next dynasty. So, as always, guys, Thank you so much for watching. It's been a great run here for this dynasty so far. Six seasons, which has been unbelievable. And I can't wait to keep it going. I'm excited to see how things shake out in the next year. We still got the offseason to go through. We'll see. We'll bid adieu to everybody that leaves the team in the offseason. Um, we'll see if we have anybody go to the draft. And then we will move into recruiting. We'll finalize our recruiting class. And then once we do that, that will bring us into uh, the become a recruit phase and then college football revamped for season seven. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching hail to pit. We'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.